Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Wajid Hussain. I'm a consultant cardiac electrophysiologist at the Royal Brompton and Harefield Hospitals. So I'm a consultant cardiac electrophysiologist and uh, I specialise uh, in the management of atrial fibrillation. Um, I'm a cardiologist, but the only thing I pretty much do is AF. So uh, people who have AF will often end up coming to see me after they've seen a variety of other uh, healthcare professionals, including general practitioners and cardiologists. And they come to me to talk about their treatment and what the best treatment for them is, but predominantly about the procedures associated with the treatment, although we do have a discussion about medication. When you come to see me in clinic, uh, I will be talking to you predominantly about your symptoms, about how the atrial fibrillation affects you and the impact it's had on your life. This will allow us to discuss the treatment options available to you and what you would like to do including things such as medical therapy, cardioversion or ablation. And I'd like to talk about each of those in turn. Cardioversion is a simple day case procedure where an electric shock is placed through the, uh, the heart whilst you're asleep thankfully uh, and that resets the heart back to a normal rhythm. The advantage is it's quick, it's simple and it's usually effective uh, at the time of the procedure However, the problem is that it, it may relapse and if you take 100 people and a year, about 50 are back in atrial fibrillation. But of course, you could argue that means 50 are not. In terms of risks associated with the procedure, there's a small risk of clots uh, breaking off and causing things like a stroke. But if you're on the appropriate anticoagulant medication, this is uh, reduced. In terms of ablation, this is what I spend most of my time doing. And it's what predominantly we'll be focusing on because quite often people have discussed all the other options and seen other healthcare professionals and will then send you to see me to talk about ablation. This is a, a procedure, not an operation in the sense that there's no uh, cuts or stitches. Uh, it's usually performed through the groin and we feed wires up into the heart and we make a hole from the right to the left side of the heart and then we go to these areas of the heart called the pulmonary veins which are the tubes that bring blood back from the lungs to the left atrium, uh, the back of the top of the heart, and we would then uh, burn around those veins. Whether that's with uh, high frequency radio waves, a bit like a mini microwave on the end of the wire, or sometimes we can use a balloon which has a freezing solution uh, which goes through the middle of it. And the idea is it's a bit like having a forest fire. You destroy the forest around it and therefore contain the fire inside. It's exactly what we do with ablation. The ablation requires us to create a zone around the pulmonary veins so that the extra beats coming from inside the pulmonary veins can't get out into the rest of the atrium and trigger atrial fibrillation. What you have to do is do a complete line all the way around with no gaps. But a bit like the forest, that if you miss a gap, the fire can get out. Similarly, even if you don't have a gap and you have a very clear line, there can be reconnection at a later date. This is why AF ablation isn't always 100% successful. And in fact, most good units would aim for a success rate of around 60 to 70%, which means no more than 30 seconds of symptoms at one year. That excludes the first couple of months, which is what we call the blanking period, because while the scar tissue is forming, uh, the heart can be a bit irritable and you may still have atrial fibrillation, but often by two months or so it settles. The ablation procedure does vary from uh, place to place, uh, but it can either be done under heavy sedation or quite often under general anaesthetic where someone is totally asleep. And it depends crucially on what kind of procedure you're planning to do. So if you're doing the freezing solution with the balloon, quite often this is uh, easily done through uh, sedation. However, if you're doing the burn-in with the uh, mini microwave on the end of your wire, that can be a bit more painful, so a lot of places will do it under general anaesthetic. But this is something that you can discuss with your doctor as to exactly what happens in your local centre. The procedure is usually done as an overnight stay, so you will stay after the procedure for one night. However, some places now are doing it as day case, so you would go home the same day of the procedure. You are not allowed to drive by law for two days afterwards and by a week most people are back to normal. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward recovery for the vast majority of patients. However, it's crucially important to get in touch with your team if you develop any of the following symptoms. Fever, 
unexplained breathlessness, chest pain, or any unusual disturbances such as weakness, inability to speak, or severe headache. AF ablation is now a very standard procedure which is widely performed all across the country and internationally. We know it has very good success rates, uh, better if you're paroxysmal, i.e. in and out, uh, less so successful if you are persistent, which means you're in atrial fibrillation all the time. Ablation is not a cure because the atrial fibrillation may come back. However, it can provide you with a normal rhythm for a very long time and hopefully indefinitely. As with any procedure, there are always risks associated with that procedure. However, you have to look at the overall risk-benefit ratio and understand the small nature of these risks in that context of the benefit that you'll gain from it. Some of the risks sound very scary, such as stroke or bleeding around the outside of the heart, but quite often these can be managed very well by the doctors looking after you. These risks will be gone through with you in great detail by the cardiac electrophysiologist and will help you to arrive at the right decision for you. Overall, the important thing is to make the right decision for you and that will be based on a combination of your symptoms and the procedure itself and the risks associated with the procedure. The success of ablation can be seen in the very large increase in the numbers of procedures around this country and also the world. In our own hospital, we have increased the number of procedures 20-fold over the last nine years. The visit to the cardiac electrophysiologist will allow you to discuss in detail with a specialist about your symptoms, and the different treatment options available to you. They'll discuss both the risks and the benefits and the support you need to help you make the right decision for you.